In today's lecture, we will discuss three topics. The topic number one, which is what is CDM? It means Clean Development Mechanism. Then topic number two, which is a good housekeeping checklist. And then topic number three, which is cleaner production methodology. Okay, so let's start lecture topic number one, which is what is CDM. So first of all, we discuss introduction part of the cleaner production. Okay, so basically the cleaner development means mechanism. It is a project based flexible offset mechanism under the Kyoto Protocol, right? That allow the crediting of emission reduction from the greenhouse gases, abatement projects in the developing countries. Then uh, the CDM has a two processes or two purposes. The first purpose with it, which is it should assess the developing countries to achieve a sustainable development. And it will help industrialized countries to reduce the cost of greenhouse gas abatement, right? Now, the companies and government in Annex 1 countries can buy emission reduction credits. It is called a certified emission reduction from the CDM project instead of reducing their own emissions, right? So, this is introduction part of the CDM. Okay, here you can see that the Annex 1 countries it means that it is a developed countries with legally uh, binding emission reduction targets, right? Uh, then, uh, a non annex one countries, it means that it is a developing countries without legally binding emission reduction uh, targets, okay? Uh, it helps the carbon sink, it included in the carbon sink projects, then greenhouse emission reduction projects, okay? Okay, here you can see that the CDM which by the uh, certified emission reduction from the CDM project based at the developing country and the low cost investment in the developing countries. Okay, same here in the non annex one countries. It means here you can see that they plan and implement CDM projects activity within their boundaries and then earn additional revenue by the selling of certified reduction. Okay, okay, now what is clean development mechanism? Basically, it is a mechanism that allows the NXD countries to undertake a greenhouse gas emission reduction project in non NXD countries and to use the achieved emission reduction to meet their own emissions goal. Right? In CDM project, the NXD countries fund the project and provide any necessary know how the technology transfer to the non NXD countries where the project is implemented, right? So, the CDM works because uh, emission reduction are many times and more expensive to achieve in the NXB countries than in non-NX B countries. The opportunity for emission reduction in the uh, are bigger than. Okay, now the purpose of the CDM which is the first one which is, the, is to promote the clean development in developing countries the NX1 countries, right? The countries that are uh, that are not listed in NX1 of the framework con uh, convention, right? Then the CDM it is a one one of the protocol. It is a project based mechanism. Uh, in that the CDM is designed to promote the project that uh, that reduce the emissions, right? Then CDM it is a based on the idea of emission reduction production, right? Then uh, the re this reduction are produced and hence subtract against the hypo uh, hypothetical baseline of the emission. Then the emission baseline are the emissions that are predicted, uh, predicted to occur in the absence of particular CDM project. Then CDM project are the credited against the uh, against their baseline in the sense that developing countries gain credit for the producing this emission cut. Right? So, this all are the purpose of the CDM. Now, the CDM project, the first one which is as of October 2012, there were uh, 4,700 4, CDM project registered and another 247 are seeking registration. Right. So there are many different types of projects that get carbon credit for their reducing the CO2 or other greenhouse gases, right? 
So this include the first of all you can see that the industrial project that destroyed the very potent greenhouse gases HFC 23 in HF uh, and HCFC 22 facilities, right? Then industrial project that destroyed the greenhouse gases and to in acidic acid and nitric acid facilitate the renewable uh, electricity projects such as the hydro, wind, and solar and the biomass power, right? And the project that destroyed the greenhouse gas methane from the landfill or in agriculture, right? So these all are the projects. Then uh, the energy efficiency project on the supply side that making a coal power plant more efficient, right? The next one which is the improving energy efficiency uh, on the demand side. Then distributing the compact fluorescent light bulb, right? Then switching from a fuel with a high greenhouse emission, for example, called to one with fewer emissions, right? Then storing a carbon dioxide in trees and soil through uh, afforestation and the reforestation, right? So these all are the CDM projects. Okay, now the next topic which is the what is green uh, good housekeeping, right? So first of all, it refers to a number of practice measure. Uh, based on the common sense that enterprise can undertake immediately and on their own to improve their productivity, obtain cost saving, then reduce the environmental impact of their pro operations and the improve organization procedures and the workplace safety. Right. So thus, this is a management tool for the cost management, then environmental management and organization changes. Right. So basically, the good housekeeping it is for the it is a one type of management tool. They uh, they manage the all the activities, right? Then when these areas are adequate, uh, adequately taken into the consideration, a triple win. It means that here you can see that the cost, environment, and the change, right? Or the cost in economic environment and organization can be achieved, and a successful process of the continuous improvement of the company can be established, right? So this is the housekeeping. Now, the next one which is the good housekeeping checklist. So, the first one, the in the checklist, they include the first one which is the material, then second one which is the workplace safety and the health protection, the third one which is energy, fourth one which is the water and wastewater, then next is storage and handling of the material and the last one which is waste. Okay, so these all are the checklist for the good housekeeping. Now we discuss in the detail the first one which is material. Okay, so the efficient use of the material and assessment of environmental impact. The first one which is the monitoring material consumption, right? So here it means that we are constant monitoring that the how many material which is used and how many materials are required for the uh, construction or any other activities, right? Then Performing a regular loss assessment to all the manufacturing and the processing stacks. Then avoiding loss due to the spillage and the leakages, right? Then establish, establishing preventive maintenance programs. Then substituting and reducing the use of material harmful to the environment. For example, cleaning agents. Then disinfectants. Then leaded fuels. Leaded fuel, right? So, so this is the... Uh, all included in the material now the next one which is the waste okay so in this process the first of all in the waste process the 4R are used right so which 4R the first one which is reduce then recycle then reuse and the last one which is recover right so here you can see that the reduction reuse recycling and treatment of the waste are there okay basically First of all, the monitoring the waste quantities and the qualities, right? Because of the some part of the waste we, we go to the recycling process and some part of the reuse process, right? Then segregating and collecting the waste according to the different categories, right? For example, paper waste and glass waste and etc. Then uh, avoiding or reducing the waste, including the packaging waste. Reusing the waste material and byproduct back in the company's own production process 
then re they are recycling and reselling the sorted waste for example paper glass plastic aluminum steel and etc okay then properly disposing of waste that cannot be reused or recycled right we know that the many uh, many types of disposal processes uh, process are there we already learn in the chapter of solid waste management right the process which is landfilling then incineration pyrolysis and etc right okay now the next one which is the storage and handling of the material okay for that appropriate storage handling and transport of material okay the first of all which is the monitoring the water consumption and the quality right so in this first um, so in this we we calculate the how much water will be required per day or per capita right now the second one which is the reducing the water consumption in the manufacturing process and the other areas right because after the manufacturing process the water will be converted into the waste water so the main problem will be the disposal how it will be disposed right so that the reduction in the water consumption in the manufacture process right now the avoiding the spillage and the leakage problem because they are again converted into the waste water then reducing and or recycling the suitable water sources right then uh, reducing the water waste water pollution because they are uh, created or cause a health hazard then treating the waste water in the environmentally sound way right so here for the waste water there are many processes for the waste water treatment plant waste water treatment right now the next one which is the uh, energy okay so what do you mean by energy Uh, okay, the reduction of energy consumption and use of the waste, heat, and environmentally sound sources of the energy. It includes the first of all monitoring the energy consumption, how much energy will be required, right? The second one, which is the reducing energy consumption and the cost. Okay, first of all we monitor the energy consumption. After the monitoring, we reduction the energy source and we reduce the cost of the energy, right? Then avoiding the energy losses and optimizing electrical installation, recapturing and the reusing the energy, right? Then uh, operating electrical equipment for lighting, heating, or cooling and etc. in an energy efficient way, right? So that we save the electricity or we save the energy. Then implementing a preventive maintenance program for the equipment. so that again if we may, if we periodically maintain the equipment so that the energy consumption rate will be reduced right then purchasing the energy efficient equipment which dealing the adequately with the blockouts so this including the energy okay now on the next one which is the workplace safety and the health protection okay it include the a uh, protection against the accident and hazardous substances and odor noise and injury and any other types of the safety right so the first of all it include the minimizing the risk, risk of accident and fire then providing a sufficient provision in case of the accident and fire creating a safe work environment for the employees in employees right then uh, supplying and properly maintaining a personal protection equipment Mat. It means PPE. It includes the uh, cap, then hand gloves, safety shoes, and etc. First aid kit and etc. Okay. Then using the harmful uh, substance with cap, right? Then reducing the health risk of the worker. Then controlling the air emissions. Then minimizing the odors. Then lowering the noise level, right? So this included in the workplace safety and the health protection, right? So this is the uh, all about the good housekeeping checklist. Now, the next one, which is the CP methodology, it means that cleaner production methodology. So in this uh, methodology, the step one, which is the getting started. Okay, what do you mean by getting started? So the planning and organization of cleaner production audit, and uh, it included the Uh, establishment of the project team and baseline data collection and the selection of the audit focus right so uh, in the started stage we first of all focus on the we on the make a team right we make a uh, project team and after that we collect the data baseline data and after that we uh, select the audit focus right so this is included in the getting started step okay the second one which is the uh, 
analyzing the process uh, analyzing the process step it means that evolution of the unit operation relevant to the selected audit focus in order to uh, quantify the waste generation and its cost and its costs right after this step one we identify the any industry uh, how many quantity of waste which is generation generated and its cost and it is costs right this is included in the step two Okay, now the step three, which is the generating cleaner production opportunity. Okay, so for that, the development and preliminary selection of the workable cleaner production of opportunity applied at industries. Right now, the next one, which is the uh, fourth one, which is the selecting cleaner production solution. Okay, here in this step three, we give a opportunity, and the in the fourth step, we give a solution for the cleaner production. Right. So the assessing the technical feasibility, then financial viability and the environmental de uh, desirability of the preliminary selected cleaner production option in order to select the feasible cleaner production solutions, right? Okay. Uh, the now the fifth number, which is the implementing the cleaner production solution, right? Uh, so actual implementation of techno can be economically viable uh, cleaner production solution. And that monitoring of the result achieved by that implementation. Okay, and the sixth step, which is the sustaining the cleaner production. Okay, so the tools and technique for the sustaining the implemented implemented uh, cleaner production solution and elaborating the scope scope in the other areas. Okay, so in this CP methodology, first of all, we start with the getting started here. Here on this step, we collect the data, then we focus on the particular audit, then we make a team member. After that, we analyze the process step, right? How we we goes through, right? Then uh, we generate the uh, we generating the cleaner production opportunity for that. After this opportunity, we find a cleaner production solution for particular industries. Then after finding the solution, we implement the solution on the industries. And the last one, which is the various sustaining the cleaner production, it means that the various tools and technique are implemented for the cleaner production solution, and we elaborate the scope in the other industries or other areas, right? So this is a whole cleaner production methodology. Okay, I hope you all understood about it in this lecture. Thank you for the watching. Thank you.